survive in advance, they say. One game at a time, they say. Kevin Keats' job is safe for one more day, they say. You are locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Kenton, NC State men's basketball survives Louisville in the first round of the ACC tournament, taking home a 94-85 to victory. Extremely high scoring, being that one of the main storylines was DJ Horn actually did not play in this game. Obviously did not get the start, but then he was seen in street clothes on the sidelines, so actually did not play at all. And NC State still found a way to score 94. How on earth did they pull this off? Most brothers went to the free throw line 40 times. That's how they <laughs> pulled it off. I mean, let's let's be very honest. Let's make no bones about this. We have talked about the lack of offensive firepower all year. This game wasn't a drastic reprieve from that. Although we did get a Casey Moore sales uh, going Super Saiyan 3 mode here, which was absolutely amazing. By the way, if any fans want to make that edit, I wouldn't be mad at you. But with that being said, you know, Casey Moore sales just had the, the game of his life and confident the shot was going in rhythm. But again, there were lots of, of you know, lots of opportunities uh, because of our aggressiveness and because of a friendly whistle, let's just be very honest about that. That got us to the line a lot, and, and that's you know what what ultimately was the separator for me, right? Those two things: the ability to get to the line and and knock him down at the line, and Casey Morsell having a night of his life. I think are the two biggest takeaways from this. If you talk about how did we get to this point output without our leading score, this game was nuts because it started off in classic oh my God, is NC State really going to do this today mode? Something we've discussed throughout this entire season is this team will not give up at any point in time. They fight and fight and fight. And yeah. that, type of, that type of effort got them the win on Tuesday against Louisville. Going to the free throw line and shooting 40 free throws is not something you would ever think you would say about an NC State team. And a team without DJ Horn no less. And they ended up hitting 33 of those free throws. Louisville only had 11 free throws. They actually did hit all 11 of those, but this game was unequivocally won at the free throw line for NC State. You mentioned Casey Morsell. He did have, I believe it was his best game all season. Perfect from the free throw line. Finished with 25 points. All of a sudden, Jaden Taylor is Steph Curry here late in the season. I don't know how that happened. He is all of a sudden lighting it up from downtown. So, hey, I mean, credit to Jaden Taylor, credit to Casey Morsell. They had very good games. The Wolfpack season lives to fight another day. We discussed yesterday. This doesn't change anything. Uh, I think the the first half was extremely alarming, and I think that would probably confirm what we were all thinking. I mean, many people people call me everything but a good Christian for saying NC State need to be on upset alert. And uh, you saw that first half like I did. I don't need to say anything else. I really don't need to give that anymore. I told y'all that if this NC State team sleepwalks through this game, there's a chance that a rudderless Louisville ends up with a win. In that first half, it very much so looked like that rudderless Louisville team was going to walk away with a win. State continued their struggles at defending one shooter that a team may have. Sky Clark went for 36 points, virtually Louisville's only hope in knocking off NC State. And he really got going early in that first half. We talked about the the possibility of State sleepwalking early. They did. They absolutely did. My immediate first thought was, oh my God, did Kenton really speak this into existence? We talked about NC State being on upset alert. Now we're watching this play out in real time. There's no way this could be real. And then all of a sudden it it appeared that Louisville remembered that they were Louisville. And so they started committing a comedy of errors, turnovers, 
dumb fouls, bad defense, and NC State decided that they were up to the challenge and they came all the way back and won this game. So we'll keep this positive. They needed a win like this. They got yeah. a win like this. It's good to have a win like this at the end of the season they just had. You live to fight another day. They're going to have to face Syracuse again. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes here. We talked about how their fight has been admirable this year, despite the majority of the results. Their fight won them this game. And so that yeah. itself yeah. is a positive. If absolutely nothing else, it was good to see them fight all the way through and finish off this game. Absolutely. And this team looked like it didn't have a pulse coming down the stretch. So let's just be very honest about that, right? There were multiple points toward the end of the season where it's like, oh, man, this is bad. This looks rough. This team, they look, you know, they, they look like they've had enough of this season. And yet, like you said, they fought in this game. So kudos to them. All the respect and love to, in the world to them. And, and now big matchup against Syracuse. And hopefully – we do not have a repeat of last year where a team in orange whoops the wheels off of us not once, not twice, but thrice. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the Syracuse game coming up on Wednesday evening after a quick word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of the day is eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, that's what brings home the winning trophy. But it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, and LED headlights, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. That's because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Middle portion of our Wednesday show. Now talk about this upcoming matchup with Syracuse tonight in the second round of the ACC tournament. NC State will have to face off with Syracuse for a third time this season. The first two times we've seen them this year have been two embarrassing losses. We went up to Syracuse and looked completely disinterested in that one, got our doors blown off in the first half, fought a little bit in the second half to try and make it respectable. But after the first couple of minutes up in Syracuse, that one got out of hand. In Raleigh, of course, this one was recent. Chris Bell went off for eight three-pointers in the first half. Quadir Copeland cooked us in the paint. Judah Mintz was a relative non-factor, but still hit a couple big shots. That's when he was called upon. Kenton, what do you perceive NC State's prospects are for this third matchup against Syracuse? Getting the little things done, right? And what do I mean by getting the little things done? Making the right pass, making the right play, and obviously staying in good position defensively. You know, we joke about R.J. Davis being a foul merchant, but do you know who was number one in the ACC in terms of free throw attempts per game? How could I forget? Judah Mintz, and it was not particularly close. The gap between... Judah Mintz and the net in the second most in the league, 8.4 to 5.8. So that's basically uh, a 2.6, you know, free throw per game spread. The gap between two and three, 0.6. Gap between three and four, 0.2. Gap between four and five, point one. Oh, just for reference, just to show you there again, the, the differences between everybody else vary incrementally. Yet his difference between him and number two, it's pretty much half of what number two attempts per game. So, you know, you have to, have to defend him almost like you would defend a James Harden where like, hey, you cannot get, you can't get bored, you can't get handsy, you can't reach, or else we're going to hear a whole lot of, hey, and hard crashes to the ground, which will ultimately lead to uh, them putting up the, the 40 free throw attempts in this game. And so, and beyond that, I don't know, I don't know, maybe, just maybe, Cover the three-point line. It's it's a it's a strategy. It's a str you see a guy out there in the three-point line. This is not the 90s. Hashtag we done with the 90s. Make sure to get out there and and defend guys when they are shooting from deep. It's a very bad idea to say, oh, he's self-checked about today's college basketball players because anybody can get hot on any day, and all of a sudden you look up you. Hey, isn't he like their fourth league score? How many has he got? 20. 20. Oh, no, 30, actually. Oh, wait, eight, three point. 
you know, that you need to, again, run guys off the three-point line and defend without fouling. If NC State allows Chris Bell to break out into another three-point shooting contest on Wednesday, I can promise you the result will probably look even worse than it did the last time because you have to consider this time NC State might be without DJ Horn. Did not play Tuesday. If his injury is still lingering into Wednesday and you don't have Horn, you might remember the last time we did see them in Raleigh, DJ Horn was really the only reason we're able to stay in that game for as long as we did. Otherwise, Syracuse probably would have blew our doors off twice. And so to to keep up with Syracuse in this game, you have to make every effort imaginable to not only run Chris Bell off the three-point line, but like Kenton said here, Judah Mintz is going to attempt to do Judah Mintz things. And I don't know if I want to consider it basketball because more often than not, it's not basketball. He is running into the lane. He's flailing. He's looking for a foul. That is his game. NC State... We've already talked about they shot 40 free throws against Louisville. Judah Mintz may try and outdo that just by himself in this matchup. You cannot allow yourself to play into his game. You know what he's going to do. You've seen him twice. He's done it both times. You have to keep him at bay. Somehow, some some way or another, you cannot allow Judah Mintz to muck up this game because it will get ugly in a hurry. NC State should not expect back-to-back games of favorable whistles in their direction. We are not going to shoot 40 free throws against Syracuse. You, that's a fact. If Absolutely. we do, come back here and yell at me, but I'm telling you, we're not going to shoot 40 times at the charity stripe against Syracuse. They might. They might. We will not. You have yeah. to find a way to not let that beat you. Last time as well, Kodir Copeland, I mentioned, he got really going in the paint. I think he finished like 10 of 13 down low just get just got whatever he wanted Middlebrooks and DR have to be up to the task on that one as well so we didn't expect NC State to be able to score 94 on Louisville without DJ Horn the difficulty meter just raised a couple bars coming into this one so I'm not quite sure what to expect from NC State on Wednesday night quite frankly yeah and I I understand that right like how often have we strung together multiple good performances especially down the stretch in conference yeah and so now we're looking at, you know, back-to-back days playing really, really good ball two times in a row. It's understandable to be leery of this team. It's understandable to say, hey, guys played out of their mind last night. Guys played phenomenal games last night. How often will we see that? How sure can we be that we're we're going to get that performance again? You know, I, I don't think it's a, a great bet to take. Um, and, you know, I, I like what you said earlier in terms of, this game was won against Louisville, but I don't think it changes much because no. it's in terms of different situations, in terms of the uh, coaching, uh, in terms of the coach land security advisory. Uh, yeah, we're still very much so in that same space that we were. And, and Keats has moved uh, up that ladder from when when uh, Grayson and I originally did. So let's let's be very clear about that. But it, I don't think that a, a win against Louisville changes that. A win against Syracuse, honestly, I don't think that does it either. I don't think that does it either. I don't think anything short of a semifinal or championship appearance does does much to move, and I'm not sure if this team has it in the advance past the orange here. I'd go further than that. I don't think it changes anything unless you win this tournament because really? that, of course, gets you in the big dance. And then if that were to happen, I think Keats would be given – uh, another year but I think anything short of that I don't think the situation changes at all the the noise is very real outside of this the other circumstances are very real outside of this and I think those have much more pull than beating a Louisville team and then a Syracuse team uh, on consecutive nights so if well, they win, sure. if they win that's great because I want to see fight if nothing else at this point in the season if they win that is outstanding uh, knocking off two teams back to back, but as far as big picture coaching job security here, doesn't change anything. My last point here, and I should have mentioned this earlier, but the Casey Morcell and DJ Burns, DJ Horn, DJ Horn is hurt, of course, so I, I'm not going to include him in this. But Morcell and Burns, this is their last ride. These are their last games they will ever play as collegiate athletes, and it was good to see Casey Morcell seemed to play up to that. He laid it all out on the line and had 
one of his better games in an NC State uniform when it really mattered against the Louisville. Morcel and Burns have to find a way to bottle that up again to have any shot at beating yeah. Syracuse. And if if you grew up playing sports, we all remember the last time we played before we ultimately grew up. That is the current stage of where Morcel and Burns are. So you know that they have to just go out there and cut it loose. Absolutely cut it loose. This is it for them. There is there is no tomorrow unless they are to win. So nothing uh nothing else is promised outside of one last opportunity. So I would love to see them go out there and lay it all on the line one more time. You know, you talk about when you had to grow up and all that, and I'll tell you, having that moment in college is uh it ain't fun. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where you know, you know what I mean, especially with these two when you don't look at great or when, where you don't see a ton of great NBA prospects uh, for these guys at the moment, you know, that leaves you with very limited options. You know, that leaves you with go overseas. I mean, maybe it. go semi-pro. That's it. That's all you got. And, and so uh, with that being said, you know, there's, I like to tell people all the time, there's an effect that happens in all the sport. And even with basketball, as like as kind of strange and detached as the draft has become from college in many ways, there still is an old adage that holds true, and it'll, it'll always hold true. Winners put players in the league. Winners put players in the league. If these guys are performing well, they're doing well, they're, they get it done and, and show and prove that they can, hey, we can lead the team to some wins, you know, with, with DJ Horn down and whatnot, who knows? Who knows, you know? And I and the only reason I said that a, a semifinal run might be enough is because if you were to get to a semifinal run, you'd have to beat Duke to get there. And I think that that, while I wouldn't say turns a complete 180, I guess it may be a 75-degree turn. Like, you're still very much in the same direction, just a little bit turned from where you were originally. But I agree with you that, you know, Ultimately, unless we see a, a miracle run like we have, you know, angels in the outfield type run here, um, yeah, this is probably the the curtain call for Keats and company. Coming up next, we're going to round out our episode with Pac-9 getting their doors blown off at the hands of UNCG after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every single game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $200 back in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines, and you can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. FanDuel.com slash locked on college. Last couple of minutes of our Wednesday show. Now talking about Pac-9 getting the absolute beats put on them by the UNCG Spartans on Tuesday evening. Did I not warn everybody? This is a team that went and beat Wake Forest, and they certainly had the capability of beating NC State. But I'm going to give you a little bit of a disclaimer. Full transparency. When I'm telling you this, the game is still currently ongoing. NC State is losing 9-3 to three in the bottom of the fifth at the time of we're taping this. But the reason I wanted to go ahead and talk about this is freshman Cooper Consiglio gave up seven earned runs in the first three innings, and UNCG jumped out to an early 9-0 start. That sounds horrible, but I do not believe it is a, an ultimate cause for concern. I've talked about a couple times that these midweek games can be utter chaos, just absolute blasphemy in the run category. This is probably one of these scenarios. And whether NC State does or does not come all the way back to win this ball game, if they do, again, feel free to yell at me. You can tell me I was wrong. You can tell me I talked about this too soon. You can tell me all that. Fully get it. But I don't put so much stock into this because it is a true freshman getting a midweek start against a team that needs to win a game like this in UNCG. And this is basically NC State saving their bullets for this weekend. This is a move I think they should do because it's another ACC series. You're on the road at Georgia Tech. And so while losing big to UNCG is not a very good look on a Tuesday evening, I'll tell you what looks a whole lot better. That's a series win 
down in Atlanta this weekend? I mean, yes, you always want the conference series win, but with all due respect to Cooper and, and his <laughs> folks, I've never, and I'm not going to lie to y'all and say I'm the biggest baseball recruiting guy or follower that, that there will ever be for NC State, but I'm very confused by this move to try him out. So what's going on there? What's what's happening there? I'm a little perplexed. I'm a little confused by the Cooper start here. But, I mean, hey, ultimately, you know, I, I don't know what to say other than please put on your rally caps and make people yell at Grayson that he's wrong. Uh, but this is this is a – it's a tough look. But when, when context is added, whole lot of nothing. I've mentioned a couple times that NC State early in the season, they're just kind of letting the freshmen vibe out, hoping to win games on purely offense. And you could tell pretty early on that this is another one of those scenarios because with all due respect, Cooper Consiglio getting the start is just like, okay, if he, if he, if he performs well, that's outstanding for his development. We're going to try and outslug the Spartans tonight. And then they come out. And they absolutely lay it on us in the first three innings. Nine runs right out the gate. So certainly hoping that NC State did make a comeback by the time you're hearing this. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. If they didn't and we did lose this game, I do not think it is a cause for concern. Obviously, you don't want to give up nine runs to anyone. But if it's going to happen 10 out of 10 times, you'd much rather prefer that be in the midweek than on a weekend. Yeah, we we couldn't buy an out to start this game off. And and, uh, so... You know, if, if this ends up being the situation where we end up losing this one ugly, that's that'll be the story of the game, right? The immediate pouncing on NC State by the Spartans. That's that's what you got there. But you know, like like Grayson has alluded to many times, and like I reiterate here, it's not the end of the world. Plenty of season left. Plenty of ranked uh, ranked opponents ahead of us. Plenty of very good competition going forward. That'll do it for us here on Wednesday. As always, thank you all so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. Tell us what you thought about the Pack's win over Louisville on Tuesday and their prospects of taking on Syracuse for a third time on Wednesday. And if you are a baseball fan, tell us what you thought about UNCG slapping the ball all over the yard in the first three innings of our midweek matchup. And tell us how you think that may fare over the course of the weekend. We will see you all tomorrow. Until then, go Pack. Go back.